Hi everyone, I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com and SoapQueen.com. Today we are going to make wild rose cold process soap. Before we get started, if you've never made cold process soap before, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And you should probably go back and review some of the basics of how to make cold process soap in either one of my two books or in some of the beginner Soap Queen TV series. There's also free tutorials at SoapQueen.com. If you're still watching, I assume you've made soap before. So let's get started on this. For this recipe, I'm using this quick mix from Brambleberry.com. It's the Lots of Lather because it produces copious amounts of bubbles. I like it because there's not a lot of measurements that I have to do. All I need to do is measure out the correct amount for this recipe in my heat safe bowl. And then you'll notice that this is a little opaque. It's because it's a little cold in here. So I'm actually gonna measure this out into here and then microwave it until it goes clear. Do note these bags are microwavable, however, so if for any reason I wanted to actually just microwave it in here, I could. This is mostly out. Now, you guys, if this is too hard to pour, like say it's too thick or chunky, just put this cap back on and melt it in the microwave because in those cold winter months, this could arrive to completely solid. Now that my oils are all melted, it's time to mix up the colorant. Rather than get a separate extra colorant, I'm just gonna mix it up using these oils right here. So I'm gonna take about half a tablespoon of my fixed oil. Usage rate when you're pre-mixing colorants is one tablespoon to, of oil to one teaspoon of colorant. So that's a good rule of thumb to go on if you're ever mixing a mica or a pigment ahead of time. Then I'm gonna take my rose pearl mica and just add it to my container here in the correct proportion and then I'm just gonna take it and just mix it in with my spoon. If this was an oxide, I would totally be using a mini mixer because oxides get really clumpy. Micas tend to disperse really beautifully and they disperse pretty easily. So that's why I'm using a spoon and not a mini mixer. Okay, we have our colorant fully dispersed and now I have to measure out my fragrance oil. Whenever we're working with fragrance oils, we always work with weight and not volume, so... I'm just gonna take my heat safe container that's also chemical resistant. This is really important when you're working with essential oils or fragrance oils. You always want a chemical resistant container. Oftentimes, many types of plastic, not all of them, but many of them end up melting when essential oils or fragrance oils come into contact with them. And boy, that leaves a big mess. Mm. Cannot get enough of this fragrance. So I'm just gonna measure this by weight all of our soap recipes are always done by weight, including the fragrance oil portion of it. A general use of thumb for fragrance oil usage is about 0.7 ounces to one ounce of fragrance per pound of soap. Brambleberry.com has a really good fragrance calculator, so you can always figure out what the right amount is of whatever fragrance you're using. Now that these are pre-mixed and pre-measured, let's get this out of the way. And the most important thing is to suit up for safety. So I'm gonna take my goggles and toss them on because we only get one set of eyes. We have to make sure that we are protecting them at all times. And then put on my gloves. And you notice I'm wearing my long sleeve shirt. I've got long pants on, closed toed shoes. Kids and pets are in the other room and I'm in a very well ventilated area. So that way any live fumes are going there instead of in here. Some soapers do like to soap up with a full face mask though, so keep that in mind if you have any sensitivities to lye fumes. So this is my lye water. I've got it mixed up already and I've added, added sodium lactate to it because sodium lactate really helps to release the soap from the mold more quickly. Before I do that though, I'm just gonna make a little room because I don't wanna accidentally knock over my fragrance oil or my colorant because whew, boy, that would be a mess. So those are out of the way. I'm gonna take my stick blender and one of the things I always like to do is pour the lye water down the shaft of the stick blender because that helps to reduce the amount of air bubbles in the total recipe. So I'll put the stick blender in, burp the stick blender, get all that excess, all that excess air out. And then I'm just gonna pour my lye water slowly and carefully down the shaft of the stick blender. And once I see that all of my lye water is in, I'm just gonna turn my stick blender on in very short bursts. I'm not going for a very thick trace on this one, partially because the wild rose fragrance oil accelerates just a little bit, and also I wanna make sure I have enough time to get a really good in the pot swirl. So I'm gonna turn my stick blender on. 
in short bursts. Mix just a little, make sure everything's fully mixed. And now I'm gonna really go for it. Because of the higher amounts of coconut oil in that lots of lather quick mix, it'll get emulsified pretty quickly when you're stirring it. If you notice any kind of like grains or anything, it, look, it doesn't look real smooth. You can give it another hit with the stick blender to make sure you're at full trace. And now for this in the pot swirl design, I'm going to split this off into two different batches. I'm just going to eyeball this. So I've got about six cups. So I'm just going to try and bring it down to about three cups here. And a little bit more. So three cups and three cups. And now I'm going to keep this one white and I'm going to do my colorant into this one. Add all of my colorant in. Just shaking the last bits of colorant out. Make sure none of it fell to the bottom. And whisk that. It's a beautiful rose. I do like to force this particular recipe through gel phase because that's going to make this less of a dusky rose and more of a kind of a bright pink rose. So that's something to keep in mind when you're planning for after this is done. Now I'm going to grab another whisk so that way I don't end up commingling the colors as I add my fragrance. I'm just going to eyeball this about one ounce into here hand stirring it because this is a mildly accelerating fragrance oil and going to move this guy and then I'm going to hand stir it into our pink and once I'm sure that it's fully stirred in the way an in the pot swirl works is I like to do 12 o'clock 6 o'clock three o'clock and nine o'clock and then maybe just a little in the middle and a little swirl that's about it then we just do one quick mix here maybe like a figure eight but you don't want to mix it too much do you see how we're getting some texture on top this is perfect i'm going to grab my mold okay i'm going to pour notice how nice and thick this is getting you can either stay in one place to, for this or you can move back and forth. Mm, look at that beautiful texture. I love it. And I'm going to get the last of it out because we never want to leave any soap behind. And now I am going to wait probably one to three minutes until this becomes a little thicker because I want to build it up in the middle to make a really cool textured top. So now that it's been just a couple minutes, I'm going to just see, I'm going to test to see if this is holding peaks. These peaks are holding pretty well. So I'm just taking the back of my spoon and kind of making some interesting looks and feel. If I do it too much, I'll lose my design, which will be annoying. So keep that in mind if you have, if you're like me and you have the propensity to just keep playing and mixing too much. So I want my roses to have kind of some place to settle in the middle. So I'm just going to make this a little flatter in the middle so I have some place to settle and I can make a nice little rose trough. Okay. Now I'm taking these dried rose petals. I'm going to carefully sprinkle them kind of in the middle here. And once they're sprinkled in the middle, I'll kind of lightly press them down a little bit as well because I want them to stay in. As I mentioned earlier, this does much better when it goes through gel phase. So I'm also going to put this on a heat pad after I've, I'm done making this. Putting this on a heat pad will help the gel phase. So now that I've pushed these in, I feel pretty good about it, that they're gonna stay in. I do have a few on the side. I'm just gonna clean them up because I don't want them on the side. So there goes that guy and move that guy. Then we're pretty perfect. I always like to spray with rubbing alcohol because that prevents soda ash.
It's not just any rubbing alcohol though. This is the 99% pure rubbing alcohol. You can get it at brambleberry.com. Sometimes you can get it at pharmacies, but not usually. For some reason, the 99% really does a great job at inhibiting soda ash. So now that that's fully done, I am going to move this over to a heat pad and I made one of these a couple days ago so I could unmold one for you. So hang on just a second, I'll go get that. So I made this a couple days ago and I did put it on a heat pad. Although if you don't have a heat pad at home, sometimes just putting it in a small drawer to help keep it all insulated because it's got a top like this so you can't exactly insulate it with a blanket. Sometimes that'll do it in kind of more warmer rooms. I just pulled gently away from the sides here and here and then push out and you know we'll see if it went through gel phase completely when we cut into the middle of it and I'm breaking the airlock. I see some of the rose petals are coming out. That's totally fine. All right, now that the airlock has cracked and is gonna release our mold, I'm just gonna pull gently, trying not to tear. So I'm just gonna push. Also gonna listen to that upstairs. This is gonna just tear, this is just gonna tear. <sighs> Be sure to get that. Okay. Here's our soap. It's beautiful. I think it went through gel phase. I can see some tiny cracks here. That usually comes from heat. I'm gonna kinda just brush all this away because I'm gonna cut this on a cutting board. Since we have these rose petals on top, if I cut directly from the top, those rose petals will drag all the way down the face of the bar and leave little scratch marks. So what I like to do when that happens is I put the entire loaf on its side. So that way when I cut, I am not dragging those rose petals down the sides. And then here, I'm just gonna swirl it off as opposed to pulling, because when you pull, you tear. So here is what our soap looks like. It's a beautiful in the pot swirl. And remember how I was saying that that gel phase is so important? This is a much brighter pink than what we just poured. That's because the gel phase really brightened up that tone and hue. And slide, and there we go, another one. Beautiful. It smells so good too. This is all done. Let it cure for four to six weeks. Make sure there's airflow all around these bars as they cure. If they don't have that, just flip them every few days and then they're ready to use or give away or sell in four to six weeks. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you are tagging us at hashtag Bramble On with all of your creations on Instagram and Twitter or posting them to our Facebook page. I love to see what you create. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye. breaking the airlock for a long time.